Welcome to Mo Health Media. My name is Guy Dan Hoff, and this is truly a one of a kind broadcast. As we are going to go behind the scenes, as we talk about our seven steps on how we create video content. And with that, I'd like to bring in my colleagues now. And here they are. And we have with us from Simply Strategy, Anna Trainer. How are you, Anna? Doing great. And Elise Washington, also with Simply Strategy. And I, uh, last but not least is Nurja Shah. Nurja, how are you? Doing great. Now, we know that you are a huge part of this team in the fabric of what we do. And I know being on camera is probably uh, a probably unique experience, to say the yeah. least. So what I'd like to do is really quick so we get to know you. Uh, and we'll go in that same order. Anna, why don't you just go a little, share a little bit about your background and certainly what you're doing for Missouri Healthy Schools. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I have been with Simply Strategy for a little over four years now. And um, we've been involved with the Missouri Healthy Schools Initiative since the very beginning. Um, we were part of the writing team for the funding proposal. And after that was awarded, we really came on as the evaluation um, and program consultants, as well as working in the communications area. So my background is in public health and really working on the evaluation and project management side of things. And on a personal side of things in this whole project, you keep me highly organized. And that's and that's no small feat. All I can tell you is I would not be functioning week to week without all of your help. So I just want to let that know. Okay, Elise, let's go to you and go ahead and tell us a little bit about your background as well as your role and function with Missouri Healthy Schools. Sure. So I'm a program and project manager with the Simply Strategy team. I come with a background um, from social work, uh, focused on macro social work, so a lot of management and community outreach. Um, before joining Simply Strategy in 2019, I was in the government services and nonprofit sectors. Um, so I came into the Missouri Healthy Schools project last year when the team really expanded to include the COVID-19 communications and project management. Um, I was joining the team as a person to lend my expert around community relations and engagement and outreach and understanding, you know, who your audience is and where they are so that you know how to best reach them. Yeah, and I also will say that you are amazing at the newsletters, the reach. Oh, my goodness. You champion that so well. It seems like every two to three weeks, a Thank brand you. new one goes out and it is loaded with uh, obviously great content and love what you do with that. And last but not least, let's introduce Nurja. Nurja, if you could tell us a little bit about your background and certainly your involvement with Missouri Healthy Schools. Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm the MHS uh, web content specialist. Um, I have a background, I have a master's in public health from FLU. Um, I came into this project literally last August um, to update and post post updates like um, upcoming and past webinars on all the various aspects of our website from COVID to physical activity to physical education, nutrition, social emotional well-being. It's also become like a one-stop place for all the um, newsletters we have uh, through Elise and uh, Mobile Health Media from Guy. So it's been it's been a really fun ride. <laughs> Well, fun ride. We're, we're just scratching the surface because I got to tell you, Nurja, the attention to detail that you put all the active links every time our director, Laura Beckman, sends us some sort of resource article or resource publication, you are there almost in real time putting it up. I mean, that's such a tremendous resource for all the people that follow us. So with that, uh, before we kind of dive into the real serious stuff, let's just start on the light side here. So I have to admit, I uh, have to ask the question, and, and uh, this time, Lise, we'll start with you. When you first got involved with Missouri Healthy Schools, is this what you'd expect it to be or what? I don't think so. Um, when I joined the project and, and working for a small firm, we tend to pivot quickly, which means we um, have to, uh, as individual team members, I had to learn when I joined Simply Strategy to sort of hear a quick onboard about a project and just dive right in. You know, we don't... Um, we try to be very efficient with our time. So I remember sitting in our weekly team meeting with my Simply Strategy coworkers and Anna and um, Reggie, our VP of Strategy, saying, oh yeah, Elise, we're about to pull you in on this communications and project management work. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Um, and that's kind of how we roll with things. And 
when I first joined the team, of course, we were dealing with the COVID challenges, right? Like our normal community engagement, you know, hosting community conversations or forums were no in person, at least were no longer viable options or safe. So we started thinking about like, what's the content and message we're trying to get out and who are we trying to get it to? Um, and that required us to learn a lot from you guys and from our team of experts on how educators, administrators, physical education teachers, all of those folks get information. Is it social media? Is it newsletters? And we found that a newsletter was a really useful tool. So I don't think it was what I expected, but with Simply Strategy, we were pretty adept at expecting the unexpected. Um, so right. I think we uh, adapted um, well to that change. So I'm going to shift to Nurja now. Nurja, let's just face it. When you started with the website, it was fairly kind of small, really. Now, uh, this website that we have that, you know, you're certainly the webmaster for, I mean, it's actually on, it's being used as a resource literally all over the world uh, because of all that we're packing into it. I was wondering, again, what was your expectations when you started and then seeing what we're doing today? Honestly, I think the, I, I don't know what I expected. I expected just to um, start working on some minor stuff in terms of updating a few things here and there. I didn't realize one, it would actually be really enjoyable because I've worked with websites in the past and they are not fun. Like if right, anything, right. like <laughs> the pain of everyone's existence. And I'm just, I was hoping that it would not be like that. And it's definitely not like, it's actually a lot of fun. It's a little challenging, but it's a lot of fun. I enjoy putting everything up there. My background is in public health, so I feel really tied to all the material. And I think that passion makes me really want to make it as accessible and as much information as I can put on there. And um, I want to put that on a heck of it available for anyone else, as well as learning about like all the aspects of website management and can't just pack it in with so much right, detail. Right, right, right. No one really cares. They just want to see one line and be like, is this relatable to me or is it not? Right, and learning right. those little things on the go um, was a little challenging, but that's when thing. It actually ended up becoming a lot more fun and I learned so much. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then Anna, you've been you've been with the team for quite some time, but now you've really kind of defined your role. So again, you know, what were the expectations now, considering that we really have a well-oiled machine in terms of our systems and processes? Yeah, so I think um, going into the, the COVID kind of extension piece of this work, I knew we'd expand our focus beyond what the uh, initial core aspect of the MHS project was, which was the nutrition, chronic, uh, chronic disease management, and uh, health and PE. Um, but it's not just, as Elise was talking to, just the um, the pivoting, which I feel like, you know, in my time at Simply Strategy, we have I've learned to do very well. You know, we're always doing different things every day, um, which is my favorite part. Um, but it's the amount of content and the amount of content that we're both consuming as well as producing. So um, going back to Nerja and all the amazing curation she's done for the website. Um, it's, you know, she takes in a lot of information and yep. just really produces it and lays it out in an easily understood way with the most relevant information. Um, but, you know, moving into what we have produced, the, the webinars, the weekly mo health media interviews, the newsletters, um, I was not expecting there to be so much content and I'm just very excited and proud of the whole team that we've, we've handled it and I think we're excelling at it, so. Well, Anna, there's no doubt about it because I've been here, you know, since, you know, kind of day one with Laura and we basically really had three functions. We put out resources with, with a small website and we had Spaker Spot and we had Tasty Tuesday. I mean, that's what we did until this amazing team joined us. And now you also look at all the all the experts that we have ranging from social, emotional well-being to nurses to looking at the needs of um, you know, asthma. I mean, it, it, the list just goes on and on. And what we're able to do and provide that aligns so nicely with that WISC model, looking at the whole school, whole child um, approach. So with that, what I want to do for it right now is show the viewers a little bit of kind of what we do, just kind of like what we would follow if we made a, a piece of video content. And as you look, and I'm not going to read all of this to everyone, but 
when we ever like for example like whenever we start on a new video content idea we always start with the end in mind in other words we're always thinking what's the big value and what's that going to look like and i was wondering if anyone would like to comment on that part because one thing i love about this team because we meet just let everyone know we meet every wednesday um for about you know about an hour a little less than an hour and what's so cool about that is this is the kind of things that we review as we get set for new content so anyone like to kind of give some insight about what we mean by start with the end in mind well i would jump in and say sure. um, one of the key things that i think that has really benefited this project from the very beginning is starting with that end in mind going in and when we initially started this extension project you know we had an idea of what we wanted but we realized that for the, it to be successful we really needed to set it up ahead of time and so we spent a good amount of time at the beginning making sure we we're onboarding all of our experts so we had the capacity and the right team in mind um, and really setting up our processes like the weekly meetings the check-ins um, making sure we had that infrastructure ready to go and then launching from there and i feel like as the train has gathered steam, we've just gone faster and faster. But it was really all about setting up those processes at the beginning that I think has really been key. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely, just jumping right? off. Of, yeah, yeah, I was just, just going to jump right? off of Anna. Um, yeah. I definitely agree. I think that's a big part, starting with the end processes, because, for example, like the website, like I have to envision what I see in the end, and only doing that can I actually get to that point. If I don't have a vision as to how I want people to see things, nothing's going to really happen. So I think that's big. I mean, that's just as a website part, like I feel like it's a really big thing to keep in mind how you see the end um, in order to process everything else. Right. And I think, I know, I feel like we all could say so much about each of these steps, but <laughs> this first step really is, I mean, just absolutely pivotal for success in a project like this. Um, I think in particular, it, it reminds me, the, the nonprofit world coming back to me, thinking of like, what's your mission and making right. sure activities aligned to that. So if our mission at Missouri Healthy Schools is to provide resources, tools, and training that is relevant and meaningful to the educators and the school health administrators and all the people interacting with the education system across Missouri, then the content may shift. You know, we have found that mental health and well-being may be really important right now. And in a month, they may be asking us about the asthma resources um, and what's the what are the best safety mechanisms to keep children safe during COVID if they're living with asthma. And so I think starting with that end goal of providing meaningful content helps us adapt and select our speakers. Um, and to Anna's point, uh, I, I have to give kudos to Guy and Anna and the rest of the team who was here even before Nirja and I, because you guys really built an infrastructure and understood the landscape that allowed us to like ramp up as quickly as we did, because it moved fast. I mean, and I, I think all of us can say like, most of us probably haven't seen projects ramp up in scope the way this work did. I don't think that's typical. And I don't think it could typically succeed without that end game um, thinking. Right. And Elise, I appreciate you saying that because, you know, part of what we do, and I know this is, you know, part of my role, especially on, on the Mo Health Media, with every week we're trying to bring relevant content, is that social listening piece. You know, and also what's going on in the world? What's relevant? I mean, if there's breaking news on COVID, like the Strand, we're going to go reach out to like a Dr. Rachel Orschelin at WashU, who's going to give us the latest updates on what all that means. I love the fact that we're pivoting so quickly in real time and trying to solve problems that, you know, education people in Missouri are facing. I mean, as it says right there in the graphic, the whole reason why video content or our YouTube channel is so effective is that 65% of people are going to YouTube specifically to solve a problem. And it makes it a lot easier when we're listening to other voices out there, other leaders, or we're aligning ourselves with groups like the Missouri PTA, you know, and, and getting feedback from them on what the problems are. So then our team, this team, can do what we do best. So I appreciate you saying that. And then number two, this one's kind of big for me, obviously being a college professor, but it's big for the, everyone on this call. And that is we do a very good job on researching and researching and researching that content so that we can put together the right narrative as well as the way we package that content. And I was wondering if someone wanted to speak to that. Um, I feel like one of my roles at Simply Strategy is to be the, hey, Anna, go find an answer to this. Um, and, you know, it's, it's 
I just enjoy doing background research and finding out as much information as we can on a topic. And yeah, I, I feel like that's really um, has been key to our process as well here is to make sure that we know the topic we want to talk about and that we're bringing in the right people to communicate that. Right. And let me just jump to this one because I know all three can speak to this one. Then we go into creating that outline for both the presentation as well as you know, getting the content right for video. And what I love about this team is we meet first, we talk about it, right? And then I'll let you speak to that. And then Ann and I meet with, say, for example, the guests for Mo Health Media. And we start with basically doing a prepping interview before we'll even record so that we're making sure that we've got that outline the way we need it. We were telling the story the way we want. But that starts with this team first. And then we'll take it, obviously, to the expert. And you guys can speak to that. Well, I think that's be, it's it's project management is how I say it, right? The outline, um, I, I've been doing that since transitioning to the webinars, which were already going. And then we yeah. were able to step in and support that. And, um, you know, being able to look at, okay, what are we trying to produce? And then kind of backtrack. I call it a workflow or a project timeline, you know, whatever you want to call it. It can be done in a Word document. Um, sometimes we do it ad hoc in the meetings. But talking about, okay, what are the steps that need to get done? I mean, something as simple as like the prep call with the speaker right. so that we know they know how to click the screen share button, you know, when it's their turn to speak. So I think creating that outline of the activities, um, it's, it's more in the weeds, you know, than when we get to do the the high level strategic thinking or the research, right. you know, um, but it's really important for execution uh, and for the success of it. And I think that anyone, whether it's video content, newsletter, um, right social media posting. I mean, we collectively developed a really useful content calendar in Google Drive. Yep. We use to help manage everything that's circulating. So those sort of tactical pieces, I, I think really drive the, the success of the implementation part of it. Yeah. Absolutely. And then we get to the fun part. Obviously this one kind of falls on my shoulders. We got to record it. <laughs> so we have to pay attention to the lighting, right? We have to pay attention to the audio as well as the video. That's also part of the reason why we use this new platform. We know that people are pretty much, we keep hearing it, they're Zoomed out. This is not Zoom. This is more broadcast ready. And I love this tool as, as we're able to do today. Um, so the recording part, again, you know, we have a protocol that we go through to make sure it hits our brand standards. Now we get into releasing the video content through a variety of digital media channels. And that's really where this team really, I mean, amps it all up for us. And, and Nurja and, and Elise, especially in your role. So we'll start with you, Nurja. Kind of talk to us about once we record it, then once I send you the Bitly link for it, kind of talk through your process on your end. Um, on my end, I look at what part, like what section of the website it would even be uh, belonging to. And most of the time, especially when it's upcoming stuff or newly recorded items, I put them straight on the homepage. That way, regardless of wherever, any, wherever anyone else goes, they go to the homepage first and see what's there. So I put it there. And then based on the respective video, whatever it is, whether it's asthma, COVID related, physical education, physical activity, anything, I always put it in that specific section. Even if it's like a mental health media, I'll put it on the homepage as well as keep it in the archive as well. So if anyone happens to be in the archive page of the mental health media, they're like, oh, wait, that's the newest episode. And they click on right, that. Right. And oh, the easy access to all the other um, videos. But it's always figuring out which section it goes to, how much information to pack together just so that I can put it on there. Like usually when it's a past um, uh, webinar, I can always add a little extra in its description. But if it's upcoming thing, I literally put like, keep it simple, the time, the title of the webinar and who's speaking. Absolutely. At least now on your side with the newsletter. Yeah. So, um, so for context for the audience, you know, we developed over the past several months a uh, Missouri Healthy Schools newsletter that we disseminate typically on a biweekly basis. And I will tell you, we have close to 9,000 people. It goes out to across the state and we have had excellent engagement. And so we have, as you probably have heard, a lot of stuff happening with MHS. So sometimes it's about thinking about which content do we highlight in a newsletter so that's, that people don't get overwhelmed. Um, we try to think about where, what other channels are being used. You know, is Nerja posting it on the website already? Has it been shared on social media? So that we complement but not duplicate each other's right. efforts. Right. Um, 
we think about, you know, for like a webinar, for example, that we need people to pre-register for, we're going to put those in a newsletter much earlier than, um, it, you know, uh, MHS Mo Health Media interview that they could tune into live or that they don't have to pre-register for, right? So it's all about understanding the different channels. I um, mean, I think we plug in with some different experts on that uh, to, to use it in the best way and making sure we're providing stuff that people want to read. You know, I think all of us have been guilty of signing up for too many newsletters that we just quick delete out of our email. So how do we make sure we're not the click delete or the quick delete and that they're just, right. they're actually engaging with the content? Absolutely. So number six, and again, this is a big one. You know, I train on this at Zag Pro Academy. I've been training on this in Zaggy 101. And one of the best tips I was ever given, it was actually given at the NFL Combine three years ago. I have to give a big shout out. Um, uh, this tip was amazing. And one thing I never considered, and I was talking to the Seattle Seahawks um, sideline reporter. Her name is Jen Mueller. Um, Jen, if you're watching, just want to say hi. But Jen told me something. She's like, guy, I love your content, except you don't repurpose it. And all of a sudden, when I started to repurpose our content, especially like Spaker Spot and Tasty Tuesday, we would see jumps of three, four, and once in a while, even 10 times more views, three, four, five, sometimes a week, 10 days later from repurposing that content. So that is one of the biggest like zag moves any organization out there. So if you take nothing else from what we're talking about today, on your social media alone, repurpose, 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 especially your high performing content, because obviously you've done something right that your audience really loves. So with that, I move on to the next section. And this is, uh, Lisa, I got to start with you on this. Uh, this is where we review the data analytics. We also look at the KPIs. And I was wondering if you could speak to that a little bit because mm -hmm. your analytics get me fired up and I know uh, my analytics get you fired up. And so, uh, and also Nerd just got some analytics. So with that, talk to us about the analytics. Sure. So I think, you know, with any project, you want to look at the value add, right? Like what was the return on investment? What did you get out of it? Whether it's, um, you know, a nonprofit or a government agency or a government project, like you want to be able to talk to the numbers. Every, you know, people care about the numbers. And the great thing is there are plenty of tools available right now where you can see that data and don't have to be a data expert. Right. Um, we use uh, Simply Strategy. I regularly use either Hootsuite or for the newsletter for MHS, we use MailChimp. Right. So I can easily pull reports from MailChimp and that's an affordable, very user-friendly platform. We can look at who, how many it was sent to, what the click rates were, what links they liked the most, like what they clicked on the most, um, which is helpful to us because when you talk about repurposing content and we say, wow, like people really engaged, um, you know, with this particular platform. Uh, or, you know, whichever, whichever link it was. So I think that being able to look at those analytics and what analytics you look at is going to, of course, depend on what you need to know. For us, it's more about just getting a sense of the engagement and what people like. Um, for more formal reporting, there might be a deeper dive um, that someone right. has. But the great thing is, is that in, in a world where technology is so... Um, pervasive and so used, and especially in this COVID world, there's like almost infinite access to data and information about who's engaging um, with your content. And I know, Guy, you're more even the expert on the back end of social media, right? assessing those analytics and click rates and, and seeing how people engage. Because um, then you can change and pivot. You know, if we look at it and say, yeah, well, this, this type of content just really doesn't seem to be getting traction. In the next newsletter, that may be the thing that gets cut if we need to right. really, you know, right. make sure we prioritize the highly engaged content. Well, and that's what I love that uh, this team does. You also are looking at even the 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 uh, um, the professional development webinars that are going on. You're looking at those analytics and also those replay analytics. You know, that's played a huge role with us. And yeah. Energia, you've also been looking at some other analytics. Maybe you could speak to like maybe one analytic that you look to as you're looking at, you know, your role as the webmaster. Honestly, for me, I go off of you guys and see what is actually coming up in terms of what are people looking at, right. seeing the bit.ly's. Now I don't even like attach just the YouTube link. I always wait to um, attach the bit.ly 
even if I have access to the YouTube link. Yeah. Um, those little simple things um, are making changes and that's that's what I'm kind of going off of now when it comes to posting things. I always go off of what is something that people are actually looking at and right. uh, needing and wanting. Absolutely, and now Anna's joined us. Obviously a little technical difficulty there. <laughs> Hey, welcome to technology, right? Who has that? <laughs> well, Anna, we're talking on analytics, but more importantly, we're talking about how we use it to drive decisions. And in your role, you know, when we look at every, you know, every week or every time we put something out, whether it's Mo Health Media broadcast, whether it's a webinar, whether it's the newsletter, you know, from your perspective, how important are the analytics to you? Um, I think the analytics are just key reinforcement to show us that we're on the right track and that we're increasing in audience participation. Um, going back to some of the things we spoke about earlier with um, making sure we're creating the right content for the audience, like what people are looking for. And so for me, the analytics are just very encouraging and help reinforce. It's the data that we need. Um, you know, as someone who works a lot in evaluation, um, you know, having data to support the work you're doing is very important, so. Absolutely, and that's what I love that we do. We pay attention to all the analytics, making sure that we're providing value on every piece of content we put out. And that's something I love about this team. So if you're wondering, we just covered all seven steps. There is a bonus step and here it is. Guess what, when you get to step eight, all you have to do is basically hit repeat, have your next big idea, and go through those seven steps again. This is something that we teach in Zag Pro Academy. It's something that, you know, honestly, it was anchored here with this team on what we do. And now we just put it in a very systematic seven step process to make it easy for any team out there that you can adopt this and use it if you don't have something that works. For us, this is how we get that repeat, that repeatability. We're able to reproduce at a very high level because we're sticking to this process. And that's what I love about what we do is we all know where we're at at that stage. So when someone asks for something, we know where that is. And that's another cool thing. And uh, with that, okay, we're gonna shift gears. Now I know you're not used to being on camera. So you know what? <laughs> you haven't seen me as a host and I like to always zag. I mean, come on, if I'm gonna have Zag Pro Academy, we have to zag. So here it is. I took the time today to talk to our director, uh, Laura Beckman of Missouri Healthy Schools. And I asked her in one word to describe you on the MHS team. And Anna, we're gonna start with you. And in one word, what do you think Laura Beckman said about you? Mm, friendly? Friendly, well, uh, <laughs> here's what she said. She said, Anna is astounding. Oh. Right from, that is straight from Laura Beckman, okay? Now we'll go back. Elise, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, one word, <laughs> I would say efficient. Word? What? Efficient. Efficient. Okay. Well, I'm just going to show you the word because it's it's actually like when you have to like look up in the dictionary, but here you go. Oh. Prodigious. Prodigious. That's a fancy I'm word. Flattered. <laughs> uh, I was too. When she said this about you, I was like, wow, that's a big fancy word. You know, I even had to look it up, you know. I mean, I've heard it, but I wanted to make sure I understood it. So with that, you know, kind of cool. Okay, last but not least, Nerja, here it is. I want you to really, I mean, you got to dig deep here. You got to, you know, you got your head space. You got your heart space. What do you think our leader said about you <laughs> in one word? Um, I'm going to take a while, guys. Timely? <laughs> Timely? Well, you know what? I think this whole group would say that about you, but no, Laura did not say that. Here's what Laura said. She said, you're phenomenal. Awesome. Look, anyone, okay, I'm going to be very real. <laughs> we're all very modest here. <laughs> we're, 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 we're being real here. It is not an exaggeration that at any given day, we could get 15 resource emails from Laura. And yes. what does she normally say most of the time? Post. Please post. Please, Please post. post. Yes, that's yeah. it. <laughs> Please, post. Please post. And Nerja, most of that posting, I know I have to do certainly some on, on the social media, but where you have to put it on the website, how fast you put it up, I'm telling you right now, definitely worthy of phenomenal. I mean, it is unbelievable how fast you get that content up. Also, it's helpful for me when I put that um, those articles out because a lot of times it's, you know, I can go to their Twitter page and get them out. But 
it's great that we have that content there. And again, we have it in near real time. And I mean real real time. I'm talking within 12 to 24 hours. So anyways, uh, you probably didn't know that, did you? Nope, I didn't. <laughs> All right. So here's our final question. Okay. And this is my favorite. I asked this. Oh, my gosh. I, lo I love asking this question. Okay. Obviously, we know why you're here. We know what your role is. We know what your function is. Obviously, it appears you really like this team. Otherwise, you wouldn't be appearing on camera, especially with a crazy host like me. <laughs> so with that being said, here it is. Okay. And you will, and just to let you know, so you don't freak out. I'm going to go zoom on you just to let you know. <laughs> so you will be, you know, in a highlight mode here. And I'm going to start with Nurja. She'll be first. And Nurja, here's the question. We are in real challenging times with COVID. And we know that our work is very meaningful. And I think what I think our viewers would like to know is how have you grown as a person? As a person, as well as professionally, how have you gone, grown through the work that you're involved here at Missouri Healthy Schools? Well, um, I'll start off personally. Um, through COVID, through this work, I feel like I've changed so much in terms of learning, not just focus on what I do is in terms of my professional career, but also focus on my personal like growth. And for MHS, this has been something completely unexpected. Um, I never thought I'd get into web content, uh, doing anything related to website management. And being a part of this project has really let out my creative um, side, which I didn't even know I had. So for me, this really hits home personally, just because I didn't even think I could do this. And here I am able to do so much, like updating so much stuff that people really enjoy looking at. Um, and so it's, it's really been a joy, especially the team. Um, working with people during these troubled times, um, working with such flexible, wonderful people, it really makes any work you have not feel like work at all. And um, professionally, um, being able to keep up with public health, keeping up with everything going on in the world today uh, while doing um, uh, project management for another company, um, it's kept me up professionally, kept me up with what I wanna be tied to um, and learning new and different things so um that's that's me wow very well said very well said thank you nurja yep. next elise elise sure. the same question again how has this impacted you personally as well as professionally knowing that our work is making a difference here in missouri and in some cases even around the country so i'll follow nurja's lead and, and speak Personally, initially, um, like many people, we went to work from home. Um, Simply Strategy was already used to doing that part of the time. We have a flexible work schedule, but it changed when suddenly we're exclusively from home. We also had, um, you know, team members who have children and are trying to manage the those homeschooling. So personally, I recognized one. I I came through this with a, a very big attitude, attitude of gratitude, you know, not to be too cheesy, but I was extremely fortunate that our assembly strategy team was able to stay together and, and stay employed. Um, we continued to be able to do work. I also was fortunate that um, my husband and I are both healthy. We are only children right now or our two dogs. And so our, our lives compared to what many other people were going through, we're not facing the same challenges. It did, however, force me to sort of slow down. Um, I tend to be um, a, a busy, both socially in volunteer work. Um, I have always been that way, but suddenly being forced to stay at home, it, it, it made me sort of pause and take stock of where I put my energy, um, where I want to put my energy going forward. I started reading novels again, which I haven't consistently done since before graduate school. So um, I have a lot of um, gratefulness for that, that growth opportunity for me, because it kind of put things in perspective, like, you know, as Nirja said, like suddenly not being so strongly identified by just your job, because there were all these other concerns. Professionally, I will say, you know, Simply Strategy, we've prided ourselves on being very nimble and scalable. We're used to working in sort of unpredictable landscapes, but this was even, big for us. Um, while I do not work directly in healthcare or as a frontline worker, 
What I particularly loved about MHS was the opportunity to know I was making a difference in this COVID response for educators and frontline workers and families, um, because it's my way of wanting to give back to those communities when I know my day-to-day -day job doesn't require that of me, um, because, you know, it, I have friends and family who go to work every day, who work in healthcare or who are on the front lines um, in, you know, grocery stores or other direct services. And um, I wanted to be able to support them. So I think that value of being able to bring that through the Missouri Healthy Schools Initiative is just extremely rewarding. Wow. Learned a lot. I'm not sure I can follow that up. I don't know. That, <laughs> wow. That, that, that's a soundbite in its own. Remember I always talk about in our meetings, soundbites? We got to get soundbites, Elise. Um, and okay. I know if, I'm if about to be repurposed. <laughs> well, you're not going to be repurposed, but if you're, if you're on like one of my coaches shows that I, you know, I also do with athletics, that would be a mic drop. Just saying. <laughs> That'd be called the mic drop moment of the game. Boom. <laughs> All right. So, Anna, obviously, last but not least, and I know that you've been part of this process a little longer. And if you could put it into perspective for you, knowing how significant this work that we do is, how have you grown both personally as well as professionally? Yeah, so I would say um, the Missouri Healthy Schools Project for me has always been a project of opportunity. And a lot of learning and growth, both personally and professionally. Um, from the very beginning, it's um, given me and our firm, so both Reggie um, as well as Elise, um, my coworkers who've been involved in this project, it's given us all the chance to get involved in an area that really has meaningful impact for people. Um, and so getting the chance to work during these times with such a wonderful team of people, um, has not only helped me grow as both a project manager um, and a, a researcher, um, but also, you know, as just learning how to work with a very diverse, fast moving, but overall a wonderful team of people. Um, from, you know, from Laura, the director, all the way through everyone who's involved in the project has really, they, they bring grace and, guidance and their own particular expertise to everything we do. Um, and so, you know, on a personal level, it has really been um, just a wonderful opportunity to work with this team and learn something new every day, every time I, I talk to someone. Um, during this particular aspect of the Missouri Healthy Schools Project, um, working on this, this COVID piece has really helped me feel less powerless in, in times like these, where it's, it's difficult to have any effect on what's happening around you. And knowing that we're producing content that is aimed at helping people who are really working on the front lines, who are you know faced with unprecedented situations, knowing that we're doing something to help them um, has made a big difference for me personally. Wow. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. And I just want to thank, you know, this team here is that, you know, for me personally, I really think that working with you three in particular, well, as well as obviously Laura, Reggie, and Eric. All those other people who are going to watch yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we really, and you know, we really have a tribe. And all I can say is I've been so inspired to level up. And I mean that because, you know, I come from the sports background and the sport broadcasting, but to be able to use those, those skill sets in this application, as well as like with, with what we do with social media, I love telling the stories. I love, you know, getting news to people so we could be seen as that trusted resource. Again, trying to just to solve problems. And that has really hit me personally that this is so much bigger than any one of us. And I think maybe that's why I love it so much and feel so blessed to be a part of it. And then professionally, um, I think it's pretty simple is that, you know, we're taking the things that we're doing, some of the things that we do, and now through uh, programs, you know, like a master class that Lauren Krebs and I do uh, called Zag Pro Academy is we're working with leaders all over the country. And it's a real simple mission. What we're trying to do is help them continue to develop their influence, their impact, and their advocacy using the latest digital 
and social media tools. And for me professionally, this has been among the most rewarding work I have ever done, other than obviously teaching students at the college which is also extremely rewarding, seeing those future professionals, whether you're an undergrad or a grad student. So I'm just very blessed to be a part of this team. I want to thank each and every one for being on this broadcast. And uh, I got one last final thing, and Nurja, you'd be the most appropriate one to direct people. But if they'd like to learn more about Missouri Healthy Schools, where are we going to send them? Healthyschools.com. And what are they going to find? Here they'll find everything related to physical activity, physical education, COVID-19, asthma, school health services, and of course, the MoHealth Media Archive, and of course, secondly, um, the newsletter archive. So you have access to everything. Absolutely, and then the other really cool thing is we've got great content experts, and you're always putting out the dates uh, on future webinars that people can sign up. Uh, usually those are free as well as the archives of some of those now. So we've really expanded what we're able to offer, certainly um, all these, you know, whether you be a teacher, a nurse, an administrator, uh, a key school staff, whatever that case may be, we've got content for you. And uh, you definitely want to check it out. Um, it's really amazing. And uh, at least really quick, when's the newsletter come out? So our next one will be out planning this Thursday is our drop date. And I was, I'm glad you called me because I was going to shamelessly plug. If you have a story, a resource, an event, something you'd like to spotlight either in the newsletter or the blog or both, send us an email at info at mohealthyschools.com. And we would be happy to talk to you and get that content. We love, love, love hearing directly from the community. Absolutely. Well, there you have it. So want to thank each and every one again for being in this behind the scenes broadcast against very special edition of Mo Health Media. Again, for this amazing team, I am Guy Danhoff and we want to thank you for watching the special broadcast on this behind the scenes right here at Mo Health Media. Thank you. <laughs>